Brian, tonight we're continuing back in our Bible study on the Gospel of Luke, and we're here in Luke chapter 8 tonight, the text that we just read. Uh, can you turn me down just a little bit, a little bit of a ring? Everyone lives um, this life uh, by faith in something or someone. The difference between the Christian believer and the unsaved person is not that one believes and the other does not believe. The difference is the object of their faith. Did you hear that? It's the object of their faith. The believer has placed his faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, and he bases that faith upon the Word of God. In this passage of Scripture here that we just read, we see the variety of responses that people have with the Word of God. And uh, we also see uh, a lot of times how there are different types of Christians, and also we can apply this to the area of soul winning. Of course, the Bible here goes on to say that the seed is the Word of God. The sower is, sower is who? Soul winner. If you think about that, soul, soul, the sower is the soul winner. And as we go out and sow the seed, some of that seed, the Word of God, falls on different types of hearts. And uh, the Lord was trying to teach them, and he used a parable to teach. Now, a parable is simply an earthly story with a heavenly application or a heavenly meaning. The Lord would often teach that to people so that they could understand it. You know, oftentimes, I'll use, today I used some illustrations, and uh, it helped keep people's attention. Brought three presents up here. Everyone thought these guys were getting presents, and they were and uh, they were upset they didn't volunteer. Uh, but uh, uh, that simply, it was an illustration that I wanted to use to try to convey to the people about a free gift, ultimately the best gift, the free gift of salvation. And that's exactly what Jesus did. He used parables, he used stories, so that he could, could convey a heavenly truth or a heavenly story to them. And so tonight we're going to look at this and title of the sermon is Receiving the Word, or Receiving the Word of God. And uh, there are different, once again, there are different ways that people receive the Word of God, and uh, we're going to talk about those briefly tonight. Heavenly Father, Lord, I pray that God's people uh, would give their attention and uh, to this uh, important subject of how we receive the Word of God. Um, Lord, there's some here that are at different levels of their Christianity, some maybe newly saved, some that have been saved, but maybe they've just barely grown in the Lord, or maybe they've not even grown in the Lord. And uh, Lord, then there's some seasoned Christians here. There's some that have been saved for uh, 15, 20, 30, 40 years, uh, Lord, they've been saved. And uh, Lord, there is always room for growth in our life. Help us never to be satisfied with where we are in our Christian life. Help us always to strive for higher ground this Christian life. Bless us tonight, Lord. God's people are tired. I know that we're, they worked hard today, uh, and uh, Lord, we ask that now that you would feed them from your word in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to give you a, a couple points tonight, as I always do, try to make it easy for us to follow along. First of all, we see several different types of receptions that are, re, uh, are receptions to the word of God. First of all, we see the hard reception. The hard reception. Look with me at Luke chapter 8 and verse number 5. Luke chapter 8, verse number 5. A sower went out to sow his seed, and as he sowed, some fell by the wayside, and it was trodden down, and the fowls of the air devoured it. Then I want you to look at verse number 11. Verse 11. So the parable is this the seed is the word of God. Verse 12. Those by the wayside are they that hear. Then cometh the devil, and taketh away the word out of their hearts, lest they should believe and be saved. Now, this here is the worst kind of reception, because the individual does not get saved. We see here, uh, later, the other receptions of the word of God, that of the uh, uh, thorny ground, the hard ground, and the good ground, those are people who are saved but lack spiritual growth. And we'll, we'll look at that here in just a little bit. But this one is very scary because here is a person that the sower has presented the seed to them and have given them the seed, but that seed does not ever germinate and grow. The person is never saved. 
That is the, one of the scariest things for me and one of the hardest things for me to see when I go out soul winning or when I witness to people is when I am able to present the gospel to someone and they say those words that just ring in my ears with fear, maybe later or another time or I'm not ready yet. I hate that because when you leave that person, the devil then has an opportunity to come in and to steal that seed away. Just as the Bible was saying here that the, the seed would fall on this hard ground and the birds would then come and pick up that seed. Uh, this was a representation of an area that had been trodden. The Bible says it was a wayside. A wayside is where people would walk frequently. If you've ever been down a trail and uh, where people have walked through, uh, the grass doesn't grow there. It's often just hard dirt because it's been stomped down. And so anything that falls upon that hard ground, it does not, it, it's very difficult for it to get into that loose soil and have an opportunity to grow. That's why you'll find a path that does not have any uh, growth on it. It's just hard ground. And that's a picture of the person where the seed comes to them and it's it, the sower sows the seed, but then that person is not saved. For the soul winner, that hurts. I hate to see when someone is able to hear the gospel, the seed is sown, but they do not receive the word of God. In Matthew chapter 13, verse 19, it says, When anyone heareth the word of the kingdom and understandeth it not, then cometh the wicked one and catcheth away that which was sown in his heart. This, he, uh, this is he which receiveth seed by the wayside. Boy, it's so scary. Uh, soul winners, that's why you, you ought to try to do your very best. Now, obviously, we cannot force anyone to be saved. We can't cram it down their throat and make them trust Christ. But we ought to do everything possible. Uh, I'm going to embarrass you, but Chip, I'd love to go out soul winning with you because uh, he's relentless. If you've been soul winning with he doesn't take no for an answer. And uh, he'll try all kinds of angles to get someone saved. Uh, but that's good because, hey, we don't know if that person is ever going to have another opportunity to receive the word of God. This is a hard thing for a believer who is a soul winner to see because after that soul winner leaves them, the devil then has opportunity to take the gospel out of their attention and their focus. By the way, he's great at that. <laughs> he has a good job of uh, giving them other things to do or uh, things to uh, take care of. And as soon before long, they'll forget about that salvation message that was given. E. Paul Hovey said this, people do not reject the Bible because it contradicts itself. They uh, reject the Bible because it contradicts them. It contradicts them. They don't like how it is asking them to change something in their life. And uh, that's exactly what we have to do as believers. We have to uh, uh, give the word of God, but then someone has to then receive it. They have to receive it. They have to be willing to make that change. And so the first reception we see is the what? The hard reception. The first reception is the what? The hard reception. All right. Now, I know everyone's tired here. We all worked really hard today. I know you guys are tired, but you, you didn't even have choir practice tonight. I mean, come on. You probably got some good naps in today, right? At least Brother Jonathan did. All right. Now, in regards to the hard reception, the hard reception, that hard soil, that's why it's so important, soul winner, that before you go out soul winning, that you pray the Holy Spirit to go before you and to soften the hearts of people. Amen? Remember, the wayside is a picture of that hard ground that's been pressed down. If a seed is going to grow, what do you typically have to do? you got to till up that ground, right? you gotta, you got to move that soil around so the seed will get in there and have an ability to grow. Likewise, as a soul winner, before you go out, you've got to say, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, I need your help today. I'm going to go out and do what you asked me to do, but I need you to go before me and work on the hearts of these people, the men and women, boys and girls that I'm going to talk to. I need you to soften up their heart so that when I throw the seed out there, then it will catch and germinate. We need the Holy Spirit's help. You can go out and see people saved without the Holy Spirit, but let me tell you something. When you do have his power, things happen big time. Big time. 
You need him. You've got to pray for his help. So we see here the what reception? Hard reception. Number two, we see a rocky reception. A rocky reception. Look at verse number six. The Bible says, and some fell upon a rock. And as soon as it was sprung up, it withered away because it lacked moisture. Look at verse number four, uh, verse 13. They on the rock are they which, when they hear, receive the word with joy, and these have no root, for, uh, for a while believe, and in time of temptation fall away. Saved person or unsaved person? A saved person. They received it, but eventually they fall away. Now, how does this happen? In this soil, everything looks to be okay as the plant sprouts up and grows, but the plant eventually withers away because of the hard soil that it was planted in and the lack of moisture upon it. The problem with this is that the plant failed in the Christian life in the area of its roots. Did you hear me? A plant that is going to be successful and grow and flourish has got to be rooted. It's got to be rooted. If there's no roots, guess what? It's going to wither away. It will not be able to withstand the storms of life unless it gets rooted. By the way, every Christian, when they first get saved, they need to get rooted into a good Baptist church. They need to get rooted in the Word of God, and they need to get rooted in the doctrines of the Word of God. The Bible says in Colossians 2, 7, rooted and built up in him and established in the faith as ye have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. This category is probably the largest group of believers out there. There are people like this all over the place. They are people who have been saved, but never ever went any further in their Christian life after that. They got saved, but they don't know the Bible. They, if you told them turn to Malachi, they wouldn't know where to go. They, they don't even know anything about any of the doctrines of the Word of God. All they know is that they're going to heaven when they die. And that's wonderful and great, but that's not what God intended for the Christian life to be. He wants you to get rooted in, establish, and grow, and flourish. But sadly, there are many Christians out there today that don the seats of many churches who are just shallow Christians. Guess what? When the storms of life come, just like many of these trees during the last uh, heavy rains that we had, you saw many trees fall down. Why? Because they had no root system. No root system. That's why I'm so excited uh, to start some discipleship classes here in the new year. Uh, in 2022, I have some plans that those who got saved in our church that on Wednesday night we would have some discipleship classes and we would try to get these converts to grow in the Lord. And by the way, I'm going to need your help with that. I'm going to need some people here, seasoned Christians, that can take a curriculum and sit down with a new convert and say, hey, this is what the Bible said. This is, this is the Word of God. And these are the doctrines of the Word of God. So that we can get people rooted in. Did you hear me? Get them rooted in. Why? So when the storms of life come, they're not going to be just withered away Christians, falling away Christians. And that's exactly what the Bible's talking about here. This was a believer who was saved, but when the storms came, they withered away. Why? Because of the rocky soil that they were planted in. That is why I'm, uh, 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 that's why it takes a group effort to see Christians mature and stick. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 6, Paul says this, I have planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. Amen? Hey, if, if we are going to put a effort forth in growing people in the Lord, it's going to take a group effort. There's going to have to be a soul winner that, 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 that gets people saved, and then there's going to have to be some apollos that help disciple people, but ultimately it's God that gives the increase. Amen? But we've got to do our part in that full cycle. Amen? Hey, God's doing his part. We got many soul winners doing their part. Once again, we're going to need some people, we're going to need some apollos that are help water and mature these Christians in the Lord. So we see here the what reception? Number one, the heart reception. Number two, number two we see the, the rocky reception. Number three, we see a thorny reception. A thorny reception. Look with me at verse seven. Verse seven. And some fell among thorns, 
and the thorns sprang up with it and choked it. Look at verse 14. And they and that which fell among thorns are they which, when they have heard, go forth and are choked with cares and riches and pleasures of this life and bring no fruit to perfection. Saved or unsaved individual? Saved individual. So we see this person, they got saved, they began to grow in the Lord, but over time they began to get a Lord with the world and its pleasures, and its joys. They become, fo uh, they become focused on other things than what the Lord intended them to be focused on, and that is bearing fruit. Did you hear me? Bearing fruit. We call this a thorny reception. This group is composed of Christians who have been saved, discipled. They have never experienced the joy of producing fruit. This group is too concerned with the allurements of this life and the pleasures of it. They don't have time to serve the Lord, or they don't have time to ever go out soul winning. They don't have time for anything other than for themselves and for their own pleasures. Thorns and weeds often take the nourishment and water that the main plant really needs to survive. And this is what this thorny reception is. A thorn is another type of a weed. And what it does is it ends up taking the nourishment that was intended for the main plant. If you have a garden, you start to see weeds shoot up around that plant. You better be very diligent to pull those weeds up. Because if not, before long, it's going to suck all the nourishment out of that plant, and that plant is no longer going to be productive and fruitful. Likewise, in the Christian life, the thorns and weeds are allurements and earthly pleasures that will suck the joy out of the believer's life. These thorns represent the cares of this world, and they are misplaced priorities in the life of a Christian. You need to put it in. But then after that, you need to have nothing between my Lord and the Savior. Get rid of all the allurements of pleasure. Listen, God wants you to enjoy this life. The Lord wants you to have fun. He wants you to enjoy Christmas. He wants you to have things. There's nothing wrong with that. We, we talked about that this morning. God gives us good gifts, good gifts, good things. He wants you to have many good things, but that ought not to be the focus. The focus here in the Christian life is that we would grow in the Lord and then start to bear fruit. That's what we're here for. God wants us to produce. The real joy of the Christian's life is found in producing fruit. Soul winning. Soul winning. Hey, our church has no right to, uh, 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 to, to, to uh, be here on this property except we're doing what God's intended us to do, and that is to bear fruit. So many. We see here, number one, a hard reception. Number two, a rocky reception. Number three, a thorny reception. Number four, we see a good reception. A good reception. Look with me at verse number eight. Another fell on good ground and sprang up. And what? Bear fruit. And hundredfold. And when he had said these things, he cried, he that hath ears to hear, let him hear. Go to verse number 15. But that on the good ground are they which in an honest and good heart, having heard the word, keep it and bring forth fruit with patience. This is a group of believers that have received the word of God, understood it, uh, 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 got rooted in, began to grow, and now they are enjoying the joys of bearing fruit in the Christian life. Look at verse number eight. It says that this seed produced a hundredfold. Wait a second. This one seed produced a hundred? How does that happen? Bearing fruit. Huh? Hey, you want to be a good fruit tree? Then you better bear some fruit. If you're a fruit tree that's planted, it doesn't have any fruit on it, it needs cut down. The Lord doesn't need fruit trees that are just existing. Just there, holding a place on the ground. The Lord needs fruit trees that are bearing fruit, full of fruit. I've got a tree in my backyard right now. It's a cherry tree. When we first moved in the home, it had a lot of cherries all over. I mean, you could just get cherries like crazy off of it. 
past couple of years, there's been less and less tree foliage. But this year, there was just one little corner section of the tree that was bearing tree. Now, it's not my house, and I don't have a right to do it. But honestly, if it were another year, there were no cherries on that tree. You know what would happen? Cherry firewood. Ooh, that makes for some good barbecue. Woo! I would cut it down. Listen, the Lord wants you to bear some fruit. Amen? He doesn't need some trees that are just existing in the Christian life. He wants you to get rooted in, to begin to grow in the Lord spiritually, but not just to be full of knowledge, but he wants you to take that knowledge and impart it on others and teach them how to produce fruit. Since you've been coming to this church, who have you reproduced? Who have you added to this church since you've been coming to this church? Hey, that's how we know we're reproducing. Amen? We're bringing people. We're, we're seeing people saved. We're, we're getting them in the baptistry and getting them baptized. And then we're discipling them and teaching and training them. And then teaching them to do likewise. The good reception. The good reception. That's that good ground. This Christian's life will be the most rewarding and full of growth. Turn to Psalms chapter 1, verse 1. Psalms chapter 1, verse 1. Psalms 1, 1. <clears throat> Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. You want to be a prosperous Christian? It's not about how much money you make. It's not about what type of things you have here on this earth. It's about the fruit. It's all about the fruit. Amen? That's what God's concerned with. The fruit. There are different receptions out there. There's a hard reception. And that's a scary reception. Those are people that have heard the gospel but never come to the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Then there are those that are that rocky soil. They receive it they never get rooted in in the Christian life. They never get discipled. They never grow. They're just existing until the first storm of life comes and they're no longer around. Then you have those Christians. They're saved. They've been discipled. They've grown in the Lord, but then all of a sudden, gives a warning here. Look with me in the last part of verse 8. When he had said these things, he cried, He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. <laughs> warning number one, hear the word. Hear the word. When I say hear the word, I don't mean he didn't hear the word. It went in one ear and out the other. Hear it. Hear it. You need to hear the word. This is the word.
word of the Lord. He's given you a challenge here. Then, look at verse 15. Having heard the word, what's the next two words? Keep it. Keep it. Hear the word. Keep the word. Hear the word. Keep the word. God wants you to not just be hearers of the word, but also doers. Those that keep and abide and do it. You want to be a happy Christian? Hear the word of God. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you for this powerful parable.